Hi guys, welcome back. I am going to try this video again. I got interrupted. I am here with um, the craft fair crafty video that I promised you guys the other day. So, what I like to do is these are clothes pins, and I got a whole bunch stacked on here, and I'll kind of show them to you individually. Um, I'm going to, I'm trying to make like 25 sets of them, and I usually sell them. Um, I usually sell them for two dollars each. So all they are is clothes pins, and I I glue magnets on the back. Sorry for stuttering, guys. A little distracted. Okay, so these are all Dollar Tree stickers because I got carried away buying Dollar Tree stickers a couple months ago. But you guys could use any stickers that you have. Especially if you bought a collection of stickers and decided you d didn't like as many as you originally thought you were going to, then any of the ones that'll fit on a clothespin, you can just glue them on. They can be big. I mean, look at this one. This one takes up the whole clothespin. But as long as um, you can make them fit on there, I don't recommend putting any sideways. I'll show you guys what I mean in a minute. Uh, here's some with the succulents on them. And I always try and choose uh, a paper behind it that matches pretty much. Because you make it cohesive and look nicer than it's more appealing and I want to buy it. So we got some of the garden ones. This one I did put five that all had a sticker on it. They were smaller stickers, so it worked pretty good. Um, but as you can tell, <coughs> excuse me, on most of them I do like three stickers and then two plain ones with just gems or bling on them. And I usually put five or six in a pack. This one's really pretty. I like this one. And just, I have a variety here. Um, I live in a small town, so there's a lot of cowboys, so I know these ones will go really well. Most of the stickers are the three-dimensional stickers, if and they had foam um, on the back already, and I put more foam to make them sturdy. These ones, they were just m more flat stickers, and the whole back of the sticker was sticky, so these I had to stick onto a piece of cardstock and then fussy cut all the succulent ones, and that that took a while. Also the this one right here, these two, I had to fussy cut and um, some of the ones with the flowers, like this one and some of the potted plant ones, they were the flat stickers and I had to uh, fussy cut them. This one's a large one. This is the stem to the birdhouse, but they're cute. Here's some of these, and like I said, just try and make the paper that's in the back match. And I'm going to show you guys the measurements for the paper and for the thing that it's mounted on in just a minute. <clears throat> I got carried away. This one's only got three on it, but the stickers are large, so it just it just depends on how big the stickers are. And I. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I love making things out of clothespins. I make clothespin wreaths and have other different decorations that I make out of clothespins. For some reason, I just really like them. So I had these purple ones pre-painted, and I had some pink ones pre-painted from something else that I had did. So I just went back into my stash and pulled them out because there was only a couple of each left. So it made it really easy using up more of my leftover supplies. So there's that one. So like I said, I want to get like 25 of them when I'm done. I got some more of the cowboy ones that I already have been working on. I just need to put some bling on them and do the in-between ones with the bling. But I will show you guys what I use. I go to Walmart to buy my clothespins. You can get 100 of them for $1.78, $1.88. So that's cheaper than buying a 50-pack at Dollar Tree for a dollar. And then I get my 
magnetic tape at Walmart also. Sorry guys, I had to take a drink. It comes, it's one inch and it's 10 feet long. And it just unrolls. This side is sticky. And then I just, <clears throat> for the ones that I was using with the Cowboys, where did my pin go? I use a furniture pin that you use to fix scratches on your furniture. And I literally just take it off and run the marker across it. And that's how I stain these ones. And then for the ones that I'm not going to stain, I find a piece of paper. And I you can use st cardstock. This is really flimsy paper that from a pack I bought at Walmart. And just find which direction you want your pattern to be going. I try not to ch choose too busy of a pattern paper. That way it doesn't distract from what you're putting on it. But let me open my close pens because I need them. <clears throat> I use just my tacky glue. And I know with thinner paper it can warp the paper. And you you got to be really careful. I'll show you guys a little trick that I use with it to make it not quite as bad. But... I'll take whatever my stickers are, especially if they're on like the clear acetate, and I'll take like my paper, and I'll kind of line them up and look and see if what I have goes with the background. You want it to match, it's pretty good, but, <coughs> excuse me, when I do this, I just put a little bit on there like that, and then I actually just take my finger and smear it all the way across. And then I'll line it up, and I kind of wiggle it a little bit, and you can feel it get like tight, and that way I know it's secure. And, oh, I broke one. My pack is stuck. Give me a second. Breaking stuff already. I do do stuff before I take them apart, so that's okay. And I'll kind of look at it. Push in your things, make sure they're all the way in and it's not really crooked and one side doesn't cut off or cut off because sometimes that happens. And if there's a rough side on one or a really ugly, like dark, burnt looking side, that'll be the side I um, put the magnet on. I want the smoother side for my paper. And then again, I'm almost out. Just kind of like that. And just smear it. Make sure you get it really close to the edges so it doesn't peel up. I have used Mod, po Mod Podge to do these, but if you Mod Podge the outside of the paper, uh, the hot glue, when you glue your stickers down, it tends to not adhere very well and it'll pop off. I've had to re-glue several of them because of that. So I think this just works better. And you can stick them pretty close together. You just need enough room to get a pair of scissors in between it. And that way you, uh, you don't waste a lot of paper. There are several other people. I know Scrap the World is one uh, that has done this and has a tutorial on it. <clears throat> I was doing this even before I found all the YouTube videos. So <clears throat> I didn't take this idea from anybody. But... If you want another tutorial, you can find them. They're out there. So I usually leave that and then let it set for a minute. I'll set it aside. And then I'll start working on some more. I got some other ones I'm going to use this paper with. It is a little busy, but uh, since I'm only going to be using small sections of it, it should be fine. I'll just do a couple more really quick and then I'll move on and show you what else I do because I only have 20 minutes of recording time on my phone so all my videos have to be under 20 minutes and I can only if they're bigger or take up the whole 20 minutes I can only record and post one at a time but that's okay it keeps them short keeps me hurrying and then you just don't have to listen to a huge long video oops Sometimes they get a little crooked. So, see how that one's not all the way in? Just kind of snap it in. This side looks a little rougher, so I'll save that for the magnet side. And then just 
mirror it. Get your baby wipes out. You can wipe off your finger if it drives you crazy. One last one really quick. And I got a couple measurements here that I'm going to show you for the bases. All right. So we got this on there. I'm going to pause the video so I don't run out of time. And I will switch up what I'm doing right here and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes. I moved this over here. So these are the yellow ones. And see, as you can tell, there's very little warping on it. But you can just tell the indentions where this is. So like I said, all you needed was enough space to cut in between them. So go like this. And then get a smaller pair of scissors and I turn it this direction and I just line my scissors up against it you can feel when you hit it and I just kind of go through it is a little difficult when you get by this but you just gotta take your time make sure you're not doing anything crooked Looks pretty even, looks pretty straight. I can get to focus on that. Oops. So. And then I'll put my magnet on. Now what I do for my magnet is I take my clothespin and since all the clothespins are different lengths, I usually just go like this. I did measure it out. It was um, three, three, two and three quarters inches, I believe. I'll measure it in just a second. Let me see if I can. There we go. See, I just leave it just a little bit. So I have just a little bit of room because, like I said, they're not all the same. So let's see here. Yeah. Two and three thirds of an inch. Three fourths. Excuse me. Two and three fourths of an inch is how long this is, and it's one inch wide. And if on most of them, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Let's see here. Nope, you can't. But on the paper, there's like a little faint line right here and a little faint line right here. So I cut a core about a eighth or so inch on the in outside of the line, I guess. And then I'll flip it and I'll do the same thing. And that makes them all pretty even in size. And then from this one inch piece, you just have enough for three clothespins. So I peel off the sticky on the back and I always put hot glue on it. Just because like I said, I like my stuff to stay put. I don't want it to fall apart when somebody picks it up and touches it. And then I just hold it onto the back. I got um, the glue on my hand, sorry guys. And see, it fits almost perfect. It leaves just enough room in case they're just a little opposite on length. So you wanna do your, whatever you're doing for your paper first, then you wanna put your magnet on it, and then you'll pick out your decoration. <clears throat> so like, if you wanted to do this butterfly, say, this one's easy. You can look at it, see if it looks good. It looks pretty cute. So this one's pretty good on the foam for the length of it. Once again, I'm gonna put some hot glue on there. If it was really long, say it was something that had to go this way, I would put more foam tape here and more foam tape there so that when the person is you know, pinching it and touching it, they don't bend, bend the cardboard. And I usually put all of my dimensions about where this is. I use that as my point. It seems to look pretty good like that. Sorry about the flash being on. Is that better? Right there, there we go, see? And then I can find some bling and put some bling on there. Give me just one second. So I picked this up at Walmart because for some reason I lose all my bling. I bought in the big container at Walmart that costs like what? 10 to 12 bucks that was like a thousand something pieces in it in three different sizes 
and I've used quite a bit of it and I have it in a little sandwich bag and I can't find it and then I bought in the you know the sheets of bling from Dollar Tree and I've lost those so I picked this up at Walmart today for like three bucks it's got 1300 in it so hopefully I don't lose this so I'm gonna stick a couple I'm going to stick a couple on this one really quick. They're individual. Oh, no, they're not. Okay, then. Well, I usually like three. Do it in sets of like three at the very top. And then I'll pull it off. See, like that. And that's, that's how easy it is to make a clothespin. It does take a while. I mean, like I said, I've got... 25 sets and each set's got like five in it so it's taken me a couple of days to do it but I haven't sat down and just done it now before I run out of time on my video I'm going to show you how I make the holder for all the clothespins I just take a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and <clears throat> if you do it right and not mess up like I did um, you can get four at least four out of a 12 by sheet 12 sheet of paper. Now once again, like I say, always say, my trimmer's not big enough, so I have to fold my paper. For this, it's okay, but you guys would just run it through your trimmer like normal. And when I cut it down this way, I actually have been ending up with some chunks left over like this, and they're perfect size for bag toppers, so I'm going to save these and use them for bag toppers. I cut one, I messed up on one, and I only was able to, to get two out of the 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And I had all these scraps left over now. I totally trashed a piece of paper. So, yeah. So the measurements for this, get out my piece of paper here. It's five inches wide by three and three fourths inches tall. And then this little strip, I'll show you right here, this is what it looks like that you clip all your clothespins onto. See? It is six inches long, and then at each end, you score at either one-fourth or three-eighths, depending on how you like it. Because if you score at one-fourth, it touches the edge of the papers like this. If you score at three-eighths, it leaves a gap on each side so it just depends on how you like it you can score it at one fourth or three eighths depending on how you want it to set on your paper and then the clothes pins are about three eighths of an inch deep so this is three eighths of an inch so again five inches three and three fourths inches this strip is six inches and you score at one fourth and then you score at three eighths you score at one fourth and then you score at three eighths and then you just fold it Let's see if I can get this done really quick. So I will cut at five really quick right here. Oops, sorry guys, I'm moving you around. I'm gonna cut at five. And then I will cut at three and three fourths. And like I said, this is just how I do it because my paper trimmer's small. Here's my piece I'm gonna set aside for my back topper. Here's my two pieces. Now on this other piece, before I cut it, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna trim that. And that one I didn't tell you guys, I apologize. It's three fourths of an inch wide. So this one is still six inches long. So at three fourths of an inch, I'm gonna cut it. And I can even do it again because I only need five inches, and this is more than five inches. So now I got enough strips for four. Now I can I'll come back in a second and trim that. Here's my scissors. So I'll just cut this in half. And then again, like I showed you, I'll flip it over and oh no. Sorry guys, I misplaced my scoring thingy I use. So, 
I'm just going to use this. It has no lead sticking out of it. So again, like I said, at a quarter of an inch, you're going to score. And then you're going to put it over here to the 3 8 mark. And you're going to, whoops. And you're going to score. And then you're going to flip it around and you're going to do the same thing. Quarter of an inch. And... eighths of an inch. I'm almost out of time. And then you just fold it and fold it, fold it and fold it. And then you put some hot glue on it. And you're going to take your paper and I do it about three quarters of an inch up and you just literally just set it right down on there. You can slide it around and hold on to it. So, and then to round my corners, I use this. So I'm out of time. Thank you guys for stopping.